Today's STEM science lesson is going to be about the cardiovascular system. The goal of the cardiovascular system is for the blood to deliver oxygen and nutrients through a pathway of blood vessels to be delivered to all 37 trillion cells of the human body. So you might be asking, why am I looking at Candyland? Well, Candyland, if you recall when you were younger, the goal of the game Candyland was to get your game piece, a gingerbread person, from the start of the path all along the pathway to the candy castle at the finish. So that pathway took us through the peppermint forest, the gumdrop mountains, and the lollipop woods. Um, but our lesson of the cardiovascular system is not going to be looking at the path through this imaginary candy land, but instead we're going to consider the path through Heartland. And Heartland is not going to be a game, but it's going to be similar to the game in that we're going to be following a very specific pathway. So um, in order to understand Heartland, we are going to actually make our own game board. And this is why I had you gather um, that piece of paper and the crayons. Now, unlike Candyland where our game piece was a gingerbread person, our game piece for Heartland is going to be a drop of blood. So depending on where we are along the pathway, our um, drop of blood is either going to be red or blue. And the difference between the red blood and the blue blood depends on how much oxygen is in the blood. So blood that has a lot of oxygen, so we'll say that it's oxygen rich, is red. But blood that does not have as much oxygen, we'll, we'll call that oxygen poor blood, and that's going to be shown as blue. Okay, so let's make our game board. So before actually getting to the real game board, I'm going to actually ask you to grab just a piece of scratch paper because we're going to practice drawing a couple of shapes. Now these shapes are not going to be difficult, but I just want to prepare you for what we're going to have to draw to create our game board. So the first shape will be just a simple circle, okay, no problem. The next shape is a door, and you don't have to draw such an elaborate door that I'm showing here. Instead, you can actually just draw your door as a rectangle. So we'll just draw a rectangle. Maybe we can put a doorknob on it um, just to reinforce the fact that we've got a door. Now, just like doors in your house, a door is either open or it's closed. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, the next shape that I want you to practice drawing is shown here on this traffic sign. And this traffic sign actually shows us what's called a T intersection. And you can certainly understand why it's called that. So let's draw 
a T intersection. So we'll draw this first road, and that road leads us to an intersection, and at the intersection, the road splits and goes two different ways. So that's our T intersection. Okay. Next, we're going to draw a balloon. Now, this is not difficult because all you're going to do is draw another circle, but I'm going to actually add a knot or a tie to the balloon just so I realize it's a balloon and not a, just a plain circle. All right, and lastly, the last shape that I want you to practice drawing is a candy cane. Now let's talk about the candy cane. The candy cane has a shorter portion that goes up, then it arches around, and then the longer portion comes down. So let's draw a candy cane. Here's the shorter portion that goes up, then it arches around, and then the longer portion comes down. So this is our candy cane. Okay, good. So those are the shapes that we're going to need to create our game board. So let's draw the game board. The first thing that I'm going to have you draw, and I would suggest that you draw this sort of in the middle of that piece of paper. All right, so um, in the middle of your piece of paper, you're going to draw four circles. There'll be two circles on top and two circles on the bottom. Now, in between a couple of the circles, we're going to add the doors. So let's talk about um, the location of these circles. First of all, we have a top right circle, a top left circle. So our first door is going to be between the top right and bottom right circle. Our second door is going to be located between the top left and bottom left circles. And then doors three and four are going to be located not in the middle of our two bottom circles, but closer towards uh, the midline or the middle of the circle. So let me explain left and right of um, what we're drawing. The left circles are actually on your right side because I want you to imagine somebody looking at you. Okay, so someone is standing and looking at you and their right side is actually your left side. So hold up your left hand. Okay? Your left hand is going to be on that other person's right side, okay? So when I say top right circle, it's actually this circle. Okay? And bottom right circle is this circle. Top left and bottom left, okay? so. That's what I mean when we talk about um, left and right. Top and bottom are still um, as you would imagine. Okay, so let's label these circles. So the two top circles, we will label with an RA and an LA. So R is for right, L is for left. And the two bottom circles are V, the bottom right circle, and LV, the bottom left circle. Next, let's label the first two doors, TV and BV. 
So TV between the upper right and lower right circles and BV between upper left and lower left circles. And then our two doors that are um, located within the two lower circles will label PV and AV. Okay, so what we've just created with four circles and four doors is actually the heart. So you've just drawn the heart in the middle of your paper. And let's talk about what these letters stand for. The heart is made up of four rooms or four chambers. And those were the circles that you drew. So RA is the right atrium. LA is the left atrium. So the atria are the two upper chambers and the two lower chambers are the ventricles. So RV is the right ventricle, LV is the left ventricle. Now let's talk about those doors. The doors are actually the valves of the heart and valves of the heart are either open or they're closed. And the reason that the heart has these doors or these valves is that we only want blood to go in one direction. Okay? So once blood passes through a door, that door will close so the blood can't go back, okay? So we just want blood to flow one way only. And the way to do that is by putting these doors. So TV is the tricuspid valve located between right atrium and right ventricle. BV is the bicuspid valve located between the left atrium and the left ventricle. All right, the valve that's within the right ventricle is the pulmonary valve. And finally, the door or the valve in the left ventricle is the aortic valve. Okay. So, good, we've got a good start. I'm going to take a breath for a second. Let you check out your depiction of the heart. And now, I want you to add the two balloons. So, the two balloons are going to represent the left lung and the right lung the left lung and the right lung. So the lungs are on the sides of the heart and the lungs are not part of the cardiovascular system. The lungs are part of the respiratory system. And I'll ask you, what do you think the respiratory system is for? Good, so the respiratory system has organs that are responsible for getting oxygen into the lungs. So the lungs are going to be one of the places that our blood goes to along the pathway, okay? So this is what your um, game board of heartland should look like at this point. All right, now we've got to add a couple of roads, a couple of streets. Our first street is going to start at the PV or at the pulmonary valve, and this is going to lead to the T intersection. So let's draw it like this. There's the road 
leaving the pulmonary valve. And then remember at the intersection, the road splits into these two different directions. Now, just recall that the um, two side roads are leading right into the lungs. Okay, so um, we're going to add two more roads for each lung. And here's how I want you to draw those. The two roads associated with the left lung, there's one, there's the second one. And you'll see the roads that connect the left atrium and the left lung. So let's draw in two roads that connect the right lung with the left atrium. There's our third road, there's our fourth road. So we have four roads that connect the two lungs to the left atrium. Okay, you have that? Now this last road or this last shape that we're going to be drawing is going to be that candy cane. And the short part of the candy cane is going to start at the aortic valve or the AV. So it's going to make our picture a little bit messy, but um, it's okay. It's okay. All right, so here's our candy cane. There's the short portion that leaves the aortic valve goes up, arches around, and then the longer part comes down. All right, so you did a great job drawing the heart and lungs and all of these roads that travel between the heart and lungs. All right, so now let's label these roads You'll see the first label that I indicated here was that road that leads to the T intersection. That road I labeled PT. And the two side roads we're going to label PA. So there's a left PA and there's a right PA. Okay, now how about the four roads that connect the lungs to the left atrium? These we're going to label PV. So there's PV number one, there's PV number two, there's PV number three, and there's PV number four. Okay, and then finally, the large candy cane, we're just going to label with an A. So let's figure out what the names of these roads really are. Okay, the PT that left the pulmonary valve is called the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk leads us to the T intersection. At the T intersection, we get the two pulmonary arteries. So there's a right pulmonary artery and there's a left pulmonary artery. Okay. So what do you think the PVs stand for? Good. Those are the pulmonary veins. So I'll have you We've met a pulmonary valve, we have a pulmonary trunk, we have a pul two pulmonary arteries, and we have four pulmonary veins. I have another question for you. What do you think pulmonary means? Good, pulmonary means lung. Okay, so um, 
these are all the roads associated with those two balloons or the two lines. All right, and finally, the A refers to the aorta. Okay, so what we're going to do now is follow the path of our blood drop or the path of blood through the heart to all of the cells of the body and back to the heart. So let's start at the right atrium. So blood, and now I'm going to just mark these places so you can follow the path with me. Let's start in the right atrium. We're going to go through the tricuspid valve. So at this point, the valve has to be open, right? Because our blood is going to be moving to the right ventricle. Now, from the right ventricle, we're going to enter the pulmonary trunk by passing through the pulmonary valve. So is the pulmonary valve open or closed? Good, so it has to be open. Now tell me about the tricuspid valve. Do you think that that is open at this time or closed? Good, so the tricuspid valve, we had to shut that door so the blood didn't go back to the right atrium. So let's keep following the blood up to the T intersection. And here, the pathway takes us to both pulmonary arteries and gets us to the lungs. Now in the lungs, we're going to have the blood actually picking up the oxygen, right? So this is where blood gets the oxygen that's been waiting for us. And next, the lungs, or from the lungs, the blood is going to travel along the four pulmonary veins to get to the left atrium. And now from the left atrium, the blood goes through the bicuspid valve. So the bicuspid valve at this point is open or closed. Good, so we had to open up that valve to get the blood to the left ventricle. And now the blood is going to leave the left ventricle and enter the candy cane. Okay? And it did it by passing through an open aortic valve. When the aortic valve opened, the bicuspid valve closed so that blood didn't go in reverse go back to the left atrium. Good, so that's the pathway of the blood through the heart and lungs. Now, at this point, blood is in the aorta. And what we need is to um, add two new rows. All right, we'll come back to that pathway, don't worry. But the two new roads that I want you to draw in lead to the right atrium. There's our first road, and that one you can label SVC. And our second road, we're going to label IVC. SVC and IVC stand for the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Okay, so guess what time it is? It's
it's time to color. Okay. So following the pathway, and you can see what I added on here is that I added um, the SVC and IVC uh, leading to the right atrium. So this will become clear as we color the blood. So let's follow the pathway. First of all, we're going to start in the right atrium. Okay, The right atrium, we're going to color blue. And the reason for that is the blood has no oxygen. Okay? So at this point, our gain piece or our blood drop is the blue blood drop because there's no oxygen. All right? The blood goes through the tricuspid valve and ends up in the right ventricle. We still have the blood shown in blue because it still has no oxygen. Okay, we're going to say that it's oxygen poor. Now, all of that blood is going to follow the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries. So we can draw all of those roads still in blue. So that blue blood, that oxygen poor blood, is now heading for the lungs. Now, what is waiting for our blood in the lungs? Good, that oxygen. So look what our blood's going to do. It's going to start to take some of that oxygen. So the left pulmonary artery leads us to the left lung where we pick up oxygen. Now, what color do you think our blood is when we leave the left lung? Okay, the blood has oxygen. So now it turns red. So we've got the two roads, pulmonary vein one and pulmonary vein two, that are bringing oxygen rich blood in from the left lung to the left atrium, all right? Now let's follow the right pulmonary artery, bringing that blue blood into the right lung, where again, we pick up oxygen. And at this point, the blue blood is going to turn red and follow the other two pulmonary valves back to the right atrium. Okay, so what color do you want to color the left atrium? So leaving the right lung, pulmonary valves three and four are carrying the oxygenated or oxygen-rich red blood back to the left atrium. What color do you want to color the left atrium? Good, so we're gonna color that red because now our blood has oxygen. Again, we're going to send the blood to the ventricle, passing through this time the bicuspid valve, so we get to color the left ventricle red. And now the blood leaves the left ventricle passing through the aortic valve to enter the largest blood vessel in the entire body, and that's the aorta. Okay, so the candy cane, you're going to color red because it's got oxygen-rich blood. Okay, where does the blood go now? It's in the aorta, so where does it go? Well, it actually travels through 60,000 miles of arteries and veins in the body. So that would be like going around the world twice. Okay? That's where the heart is pumping the blood to get all around your body. 
Now, the reason that we're going around the world twice or delivering blood to throughout the body is to deliver all of that oxygen to the cells of the body. Okay, so we're going to come back and after the blood has gotten rid of all of the oxygen because it just went around the world twice, we're coming back to the heart and we're going to return the blood to the right atrium through the SVC and IVC. So I'm gonna ask you, what color should we color the SVC and IVC? Is it oxygen rich or is it oxygen poor? Good. So the SBC is bringing oxygen poor blood back to the right atrium. So we're going to color the SBC blue as well as the IVC. So after we've gone around the world two times, we come back to the heart. So think about what we've done. We started at the right atrium. The blood flowed, followed the pathway through the heart, then out to the lungs. Then we brought the blood back to the heart. And then we sent the blood around the world. And now it comes back to the heart. So that's a pretty amazing journey that blood travels throughout the body.